Hey guys, B Ryan Tech here. Now we're slightly gonna change what we're gonna be doing in these tutorials because we've already learnt quite a lot of Java in Greenfoot in seven tutorials now. And if you've got this far then you are actually already a little bit good at it, to be fair, because you you're able to not uh collide with objects, remove them, etc. But this tutorial is gonna be a little bit different and it's gonna be quite a lot complex. And it's going to be a bit longer than all the tutorials because we're going to be learning how to jump. Now, the reason why I'm going to teach you how to make your object jump and fall and all that is because we're going to be uh, going through a load of tutorials. We're going to be creating a game. And if you've ever heard of Line Runner, I don't know if you're thinking of the same one, but you're a man and blocks come at you and you have to jump over them, etc and you have to duck etc so that's what we're going to be making over the course of these tutorials which it will be quite a fairly long series i think it shouldn't take too long to make a line runner game but um yes yeah, so th this is kind of the start of it all i think you've learned enough to um you know, know what to do now you know how to make an object to move stuff like that so yeah we're going to make an object to jump so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all these women right now we don't need them And it's going to remove the woman class. Go into here. We're going to get rid of the has collided one. And so I'll get rid of that as well. So it's back to basics really, but we can still move our player obviously. We're just going to get rid of the up and down because obviously we're jumping. So there isn't going to be an up and down here. If it's left, it will. get rid of all this just a bit of clearing up to do before we start so if it's equal to 1 it will move left if it's equal to 2 it will move right so let's begin let's just now the first thing we need to do when we're making a guy jump is to know how he falls you can't make a guy jump or an object jump if he hasn't fallen because if you think about it it is the opposite of falling okay you're working against gravity whereas falling you're working with gravity so let's create an integer called falling speed and that is going to be equal to nothing at the moment I'll explain why when we get to it so let's make a public void and let's call it full in brackets Now remember when we when the act method the act method is automatically called and it's called like every millisecond or so so it's constantly running so we really don't need to fall that fast so full set location get x with brackets you know how to do this get y with brackets as well plus falling speed now at the moment yes the falling speed is equal to zero and we're trying to add it to the get y in, on the set location it's not going to go anywhere correct now this is where we need to bring an integer called gravity is equal to one so this is a lot more simpler than you think it's just a bit complex to understand at first so now every time the fall method is called falling speed is equal to falling speed plus gravity so falling speed will um, suddenly increase and increase and increase and so make him fall faster so let's go and put the fall method in here and let's make him fall and see what he does and that is it so there he has fallen so as you can see he starts off a little bit slow, if I take down the speed of this show you that he's starting off slow and then he gets faster so that's what that's the key element we need to be able to to gravity to affect his falling speed so now we've got that um, let's now detect if he is on the ground so let's put a public boolean is on ground I always call it that and now in brackets Let's put in an if statement if get y 
plus get height because we're going to detect if it's from his feet divided by 2, let's put this in brackets now the reason why I'm dividing it from 2 is when we say get y it's the center of him okay plus get height that's the whole height so it'll come down to about here divided by 2 will be half the height so it'll equal his feet okay if get y, if get y plus get height divided by 2 is more or equal to, that's what I always put more or equal to just in case you know he goes a bit down. Now we actually, while we're doing this if statement, let's go and access the world. But we know how to do that as well, so let's go and do that. Window, window, so now we've accessed the world class, let's go and use it. So if get y plus get height divided by 2 is equal to window dot get height minus 1 again we can't equal 400 okay we can only equal up to 399 that's why um, I've had to minus 1 even though I even if I get the height it will return 400 but the player can't the object can't go learn 400 put that in brackets as well and let's close the if statement so this is basically if it's on the floor let's return true otherwise it will return false now what we're going to be doing if it is on the ground then we are able to jump so let's create a boolean up here Let's call that can jump. And so if it's on the floor, we can jump. If it's not, we can't. So let's go and create an if statement in at saying if is on ground, then can jump is equal to true. Otherwise, can jump is, well, we don't need two equals there, can jump is equal to false, and we fall, so we don't want to fall if we're on ground, so take out that, and put it in there. Hmm. Oh, that's why. There's an error here. If we go down to the is on ground, get y plus get height divided by 2. Now we need to say get image, two brackets, dot get height, because we haven't specified what height we're getting. That's a mistake I've made, and I've made that quite a lot of times. That's easily made, so, you know, just teaching you that just in case you make that mistake. So if it's on the ground, can jump is equal to true, otherwise, can jump is equal to false, and it will fall. Let's try that out. There we go, it stopped when it's hit the ground. Um, so, yep, so if it can jump is equal to true. Now let's add, now we want to allow the player to jump when the spacebar is pressed. So, int user input else if green foot dot is key down brackets space and close the f statement in brackets let's return three and in the move I don't know if we should put it um um Put in here so if what's the method called user input user underscore input brackets is equal to three 
and then we want to call the jump method now we haven't created that so let's go and do that now I'm going to do that underneath the ball actually no, I'm going to do that above it public void jump now before we do this method let's go and create another variable up here and actually I'm going to put all these as private we've got to do that, we don't have to but it's usually the norm when creating programs to make all our variables inside objects private so now let's do give it a jump power so private int jump power is equal to minus 20 now the reason why I put minus 20 is because when we're actually I'll explain it in a minute to make it more clear to you so when we call the jump method Put that. Let's just put that down there. No. Sorry. Okay. Let's make that. Okay. Sorry about that change. That was just stupid. So when we call the jump method, falling speed is equal to jump power. So falling speed becomes minus 20 and then we call the full method and now get y is adding a minus number which means it is actually taking away from get y so it means it's going up and then we're adding gravity to it, gravity to it so the minus number is becoming less and less and less so it is slowing down and when it equals to naught it will become positive and it will fall back down so it's quite a complex idea, but it's easily understood once you get it. So, actually, we can get rid of this can jump. We don't really need that anymore. Pile that. So, run. We've stopped on the ground. Press space. And we jump. Okay. Now, you may think he's jumping incredibly high. Now the magic about this, I've already created a jump power variable. We can change how fast he jumps. Change that to 25, which means he jumps even higher. Or we could change it to 15, which means he jumps less and less when we click space. We can also change gravity, so instead of the speed, the falling speed increasing by one every time, we can create it by three which means you know he's hardly ever going to jump at all so you know I'm just going to leave gravity at 1 and jump power at fit minus 15 and there we have a jumping man so quite a long tutorial and quite a lot learnt this lesson you know I'm uh, yeah it's quite a lot so you might want to watch this tutorial quite a few times through as there is quite a lot to learn and if you get this then you'll definitely be able to do the rest and jumping is actually really complex as my teacher told me he said he said don't it'll be really hard to learn what it rx student took him weeks to find out how to do this okay so you've just learned it in 15 minutes and someone else took weeks to find out so you should be proud if you understand this tutorial Thank you very much, and in next lesson we'll be using the jump method to jump over objects as they're coming towards us, and if we fail to jump and they hit into us, then we will die and it will become game over. So, well done for watching this tutorial, and hopefully you stick around to watch the rest. Thank you very much, Brewer Tech.